right, so looks like we're here on what part five? Love and justice and the mercy of God. Four or five, I get count. Well, so we looks like we came through all of the bad stuff that's supposed to happen. Now, now we're kind of turning back up. We, well, I guess we did in the last section where we started talking about the the flowers and the trees and all that kind of stuff coming back to life. Mm-hmm. So this is just kind of continuation of the last portion of uh, the previous chapter uh, verses. All right. So eighty-three. Let's we'll jump right into it. Eighty-three. The time approaches when the full weight of justice shall be felt in the world. All works, words, and thoughts shall be judged. See, now, this, this, this is also new in the Third Testament of the Bible, how we're going to be judged on our thoughts. It's not only our deeds and what we've actually done, but, you know, it turns out our thoughts are things. Our thoughts are things, and we are held accountable for our thoughts. Good thoughts, we get good things. Bad thoughts, we get bad things. Sometimes my thoughts are bad, worse than my words and my works. Yeah, I think a lot of it. I think a lot of how that works. You have a bad thought first, and then you know you act on it. But we don't always act on it. You know? mm-hmm. All from the great of the earth who govern its people to the smallest and least known shall be weighed on the the divine balance. Yeah. Now. Remember, Revelation says both rich and, and poor, small and great. Everybody's going to go through this. And, and this is that's part of what we're what the change is, is that we all become equal from now on. There's no there's no kings. There's no greatness. There's no body that's better than each other. Nobody can look down on each other. That kind of thing. But do not be confused. Justice with vengeance, nor restitution with punishment. For I merely permit you to gather and eat the fruits you have sown. So it said, do not confuse justice with vengeance. Yeah, because that's when you start to become blasphemous. It's, it's, it's the fathers, he's not take, getting vindication from what we've done. Remember, all we've done is harmed ourselves. But he, he is ensuring his divine justice, meaning those who, who uh, are harmed are those who are supposed to get harmed. The same thing, restitution or punishment. It's, it's not that we're being punished so much as we have to pay back restitution. We have to we have to correct the wrongs that we've done. So many times, some some of the times when I uh, am going through uh, different trials or or things like that, I will um, like say, Lord, well, why, why, Father? I don't understand why. But it's not punishment from Him. It's uh, just restitution, or it is what were yeah re- the result of actions that I have previously done, um, and it's just I can't think of the word that I would use, but it's just payback. Payback, for, yeah, for what I've done, um, so that you know by their taste and effect if they are healthful or harmful. And if you have sown badly or well. Now remember in the last section how we talk about the earth is we cleanse. There will be no evilness on the earth. Well that's part of what will be a part of the people that survive the thing. Is that they, they will have seen all of this horrible stuff going on. And so from then on they're going to reject war. They're going to reject you know all evilness. That disobedience to the father will be you know will, will be a big deal from then on where now you know it's kind of just laughed off and people like you know well you know it don't matter then it is going to matter because it's going to affect everybody and everybody's going to be afraid of it and not want not want it to be a part of our lives I'm talking about evilness for real 85 the innocent blood spilled by human evil the weeping and mourning of widows and orphans the periot who suffers hunger and misery all cry out for justice and my justice perfect and loving but inexorable descends upon all yeah all of these people who you know seem like bad stuff is happening to them they're crying out for justice but you know even they're going to be judged too mm-hmm. you know and, and maybe what they're going through could be part of you know their judgment day you know, hunger and stuff, That all of this stuff is kind of stuff that we, that's going to be on us. Right. You know, Her- Hermes talks about um, 
talks about her hunger. Yeah, mm. hunger being a part of the, the, the trials and stuff that we go through. Right. My justice will go over every creature and touch every human being like that time when the angel of the Lord passed over Egypt, giving fulfillment to my justice and being saved from it only those who had marked their doors with the blood of the Lamb. So that was an example of how targeted, how precise his justice is. You know, that was a, a living parable where they actually took the blood of goats and put it on the literal doorposts of their houses but when the angel of the Lord came through that death angel came through to kill the firstborn males how it was able to jump over those houses that had the blood on the doorpost you can imagine with some Israelites that didn't have the blood on the doorpost mm. they would have been being rebellious uh, I never thought about that but I'm sure that's true you know some of uh, the uh, the house of Pharaoh uh, they did you know they did fear the uh, the God of Moses and, some and stuff of them and some of them, yeah. yeah. And so it would have been that precise where some of them would have lived well some of the Israelites would have perished and it's only because of the blood that was sprinkled on the doorpost. Alright, I never thought about that, but I'm yeah, yeah. Okay. Eighty seven. Verily I say to you that everyone shall be saved who during this period is vigilant. And has faith in the word and in the promises of the Savior, the divine Lamb, who was sacrificed to teach you to pray and fulfill the mission of your restitution with perfect love. Because my blood, like a manner of love, will protect him. Yeah. So it's those that have faith in the word that's going to survive. It, that's what's going on here. I mean, man is, is kicking up a lot of dust, sure. The earth is going to retaliate against man and, and, and put man in his place, sure. The father, what he's going to get out of it is a perfect seed, a perfect you know, people that's going to replenish the earth. And that's what it's about. So that when it's all said and done, his people are going to replenish the earth. And who are his people? The ones who, what does it say up there? Uh, vigilant and has faith in the word and in the promises of the Savior. <clears throat> now... <clears throat> You know, the, these are the people who, who he plans to carry three, those that have the faith as a word and the promises. Mm -hmm. um, how, you, know, every, you know, a lot of other people are going to be gone. Everybody else is going to be gone. Right. It says that he who is not watchful, he who does not believe or blaspheme shall be touched so that he will be awakened from his authority. Now this is the other guy. These are the ones who will not put faith in the word. They're gonna, you know, hold out to the last minute talking about they don't believe in, in the word or they don't believe in this or they don't believe in that. Well, you know, those people will, will be shaken. Those people will be touched and, you know, those that blaspheme will also be touched by this thing. And when he's talking about touch, he's not coming down saying, well, he's not talking about a little, you know, Oh, wake up, wake up. He's talking, oh, he's talking about, about pain. pain. Yeah, yeah beat down. <laughs> a gang, like a gang uh, beat down or something. Oh, rough. So it's, Hold on. I will allow men to feel my divine presence as they cry out, Our Father, our Savior, come help us because we are perishing. Remember earlier he, he said that it, heaven will have to be shut for a little while. Mm -hmm. So this is what he's talking about. He's he's saying that you know people are, are going to be crying for him to help, but heaven is going to be shut, and so they're going to be feeling the pain. You know, that's kind of rough. You know, you here you are, a atheist, blasphemous person. You've had enough. Uh, pain and tribulation to to actually change your mind and now you you are seeking for help from our father from the creator but now heaven's shut and, mm -hmm. and your prayer is not going to be answered right mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. going to be a bad a bad way to go all the way around right I will manifest my infinite mercy and will prove once again my love for man yeah, because he does reopen heaven and you know, he does come in and save those that are left, those that, that remain, the chosen few. Remember, the, how many times have you heard in the Old Testament, it says, it's those that endure to the end that will survive, mm -hmm. right? So those that endure to the end, you know, shall um, be saved. Shall be saved, yeah. And, and 
that's what he's talking about here. But we have to remember, you know, and no, this is not constellation uh, for it, but um, it's the justice is righteous. Yeah, the righteous the justice. justice is righteous, and it's not him that's doing it to us, it's ourselves. The routine of your life shall be battered soon by the harsh winds, but the light of a star in the infinite, on the infinite, whose glimmering gives peace, light, and the calm that the incarnate spirit needs to contemplate the eternal shall thereafter shine. Yeah, so everything is going to be changed. Everything, the, the routine of our life, we wake up in the morning, we eat our pork sandwich, we go down to the job, we work all day, uh, and then we go back home and, and feed our kids from, you know, stuff that came from Walmart and, you know, you know, as they play video games, you know, for the rest of the night or whatever. All that stuff about to be changed. You know, we're about to become a different kind of people with different kinds of uh, uh, lifestyles, different types of goals, different ways. Everything's about to be changed. Well, Coach, some people might say, well, you're a doomsdayer. Well, you, you're just talking doom. And yeah, just talking doom. doom and stuff um, of that nature. That, well, and, and I can understand why they said it because it's the doom and stuff that, you know, is surprising to me that's kind of overwhelming to me a little bit that the destruction, the sheer destruction is about to come on this planet. But we have to, re to remember that what we learned in this section and the section before that it does end. After the seven years are over, we do return to peace, return to ultimate peace, return to ultimate health return to ultimate security where we never have to worry about bad things again but it's only the few that make it over there and that's what I that's what I want to stress is that it is only the very few um, that you know put their faith in him and, and what I mean by him it's in his word not necessarily just you know you know you know your Jesus peace or whatever but put your faith in, in his word and his instructions and what he put here for us and how we're supposed to live these people will be able to carry on humanity. So, I don't know. I don't know if you call it doom. I mean, there is a uh, there, there is a good ending to it all. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's, it's just a lot of bad stuff we go through before we get there. And it's according to scripture. It's not nothing that you're making up. It's all stuff that's written and proven in scripture. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, reading it. This is God's word. You just self, you just reading what He said. It's not nothing that you made up yourself. Right, exactly. You know, so if anybody's the doomed, there's Jeremiah and Daniel and, and Isaiah and Ezekiel and John and Matthew, Mark, and all of them were saying the same thing that this is a horrible, horrible event that's about to take place on this earth. Okay, look like we're finished with that. Is that on that? Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.